Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be continuing in our second of three videos that are going to cover AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 3. This is about weak acids and bases. In this video we are focusing on practice problems with weak acids. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and consider subscribing. That way you'll have instant access to my 100 plus AP Chemistry daily videos, as well as AP review videos, problem walkthroughs, all kinds of good stuff. So let's jump right into our practice session here. So this one says hydrofluoric acid is used for glass etching in art. Its Ka is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Write the acid dissociation reaction for this acid its Ka expression, the H plus and pH of a 0 0.60 molar solution of HF, and the percent dissociation of this acid. So let's do part A, this reaction. Hydrofluoric acid, of course, is HF, and we always write these being added to water. So the products are going to be hydronium and the conjugate base of the acid, which is fluoride. So that's part A. Now the Ka expression is just products over reactants. Uh, there are no coefficients in this one. Uh, we're going to leave out water because it's a liquid. So there's our Ka expression, just like it would be for any uh, equilibrium constant expression. Now part C, this is kind of where the bread and butter of this uh, problem comes in here. The H plus and pH of a 0 0.60 molar solution of HF. So we're going to use an ice box for this. That stands for initial change and equilibrium. And for the initial concentration of HF, well, the problem tells us it's 0 0.60 moles per liter. We're not going to worry about water since it's a liquid. The other products are going to be zero. Hydronium and fluoride are zero. That's all that the problem gives us, except for the Ka value. So that means the change is going to be a minus x. And hydronium fluoride will have to be plus x for those two, because this is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So everything is going to go up or down by the same amount. So the equilibrium values will be 0 0.60 minus x, x, and x. So now we are ready to plug and chug into the equilibrium constant expression. Let's see, the problem tells us that the Ka is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So I'll plug that in. And that's equal to x times x over 0 0.60 minus x. So we see that this is a, a fairly small equilibrium constant. Uh, some folks might say this is a little bit on the bubble. 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 5th, sometimes that's where it starts to get a little bit precarious as to whether we're going to be able to use the 5% rule. But let's go ahead and do that. We're going to ignore that minus x to make our math easier. So now we can cross multiply. So of course x times x is x squared. 0.6 times the Ka value gets us 4.08 times 10 to the negative 4th. So to solve for x, I just take the square root. And I find that x equals 0 0.0202. And according to the problem, the x value is equal to the hydronium concentration, so H plus. And so that's my first part of question C. Now, the, the next part says, what's the pH? Well, that's the easy part from this, uh, from this part, isn't it? If we know the H plus, the pH is just negative log of the H plus concentration. So negative log of 0.0202. And you can key that into your calculator and get an answer of about 1.69. So now we can do part D, which is percent dissociation. So percent dissociation is just the, the value of the change divided by the initial concentration times 100. So when I divide those out and times by 100, that's 0.0202. Divide by 0 0.6 times 100, I find that the percent dissociation was 3.4%. So yes, this is a little higher than some of the others that we've done, but still, it was okay to do that 5% rule. So that is a good example of a very typical weak acid problem. Let's try another one. Here we have iotic acid, has the formula HiO3. A chemist obtains a 0.95 molar solution of iotic acid and notices that it is 34.3% dissociated. 
calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH, and the Ka for this acid solution. So what we're going to have to do, first of all, is let's write out our equation. So we have HiO3, and of course it's added to water. And the products for any acid dissociation will always be hydronium and the conjugate base of whatever you started with. So that would be IO3 negative. So now we are ready to set up our ice box. And we know that the initial concentration of iodic acid is 0.95. It gives us that right there in the problem. We know that the products are going to be zero. Now normally, this is the point where we'd say minus x and plus x and plus x. But notice in this problem, we don't have to say x because we know what percent of the acid is dissociated. It's 34.3%. So that means that 34.3% of this 0.95 is going to be subtracted. We just have to do the simple arithmetic to figure out how much that is. So I have to take the 0.95 molar and take 34.3% of that, and I find that that's about 0.33. So that means that in the change row, instead of writing minus x, I'm going to write minus 0.33, because it's not unknown. It's actually a given to us, or at least we can calculate it. Now if this is a minus 0.33, that means that these others over here have to be a plus 0.33. And so in my equilibrium row, I'm going to have a 0.62 and, of course, 0.33 for these other two over here. Now that actually is going to answer part A for us because notice that the H+, plus, which is synonymous with the hydronium ion concentration, is going to be 0.33 moles per liter. So there we have part A solved for us. Now part B, the pH, if you know the H+, plus, the pH is easy, isn't it? It's just negative log of H+. Plus. So all we have to do is take the negative log of 0.33, and we find that the pH of this solution is about 0.48. So there we have our pH. So there's part B. Now part C, we have to plug these three equilibrium values into the equilibrium constant expression. Now we haven't written that yet, but it's pretty simple. Ka equals the hydronium or the hydrogen ion concentration times the iodate ion concentration all over the, the iodic acid concentration. So just plug those numbers in and we can solve very simply, you know, 0.33 times 0.33 divided by 0.62 and you find that the Ka value is 0.18. So there we have that answer. So that's a second example. Let's try one more example for weak acids. And this one is a little bit more peculiar. Here we're working with vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is also known as vitamin C and has the formula H2C68606. Its Ka1 is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and its Ka2 is 2.8 times 10 to the negative twelfth. Write the two acid dissociation reactions for this acid, the H plus, concentration, the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of ascorbic acid. So I want you to notice that this acid has two hydrogens instead of just one. These two acidic hydrogens will essentially pop off in succession. So in our Ka1, the first acid dissociation, you write the, the acid and of course it's added to water, and the products are going to be hydronium, just like it always is, and the conjugate base, which is HC68606 negative. Notice that only one of those H's have popped off. That's the Ka1, because that's the first of these two. Now, in succession, the next one is going to pop off, so we can write that. And for our Ka2, we can take this, this conjugate base here that we have, and it's actually going to become an acid for this next one. So it's going to react with water, and it's also going to create hydronium, and its conjugate base of that, which is C6H6O6, six six two negative. So this is the first dissociation. That is the second dissociation. So we have a Ka1 for this reaction, 
and the Ka2 for this reaction down here. Now let's go ahead and, and solve part B, the H plus. So I'll start with this first one here. I'll draw an ice box just like we did before. And the initial concentration of the acid is 0.25 moles per liter. So that goes in right here. These other products are going to be zero. And this is all that's given to me except for my Ka value. So my change row will be minus x and then plus x on the other side. So the equilibrium is going to be 0.25 minus x, x, and x. So now I'm going to plug these values into the equilibrium constant expression, this Ka1 that I have here. So Ka1 equals hydronium times that ion all over the ascorbic acid. Of course, water's left out since it's a pure liquid here. So plug these values and numbers in there. The Ka1 is given to me in the problem. So 6.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x times x over 0.25 minus x. That's, this is a pretty small equilibrium constant, so I'm going to ignore that minus x to make my math a little bit easier. And I'm going to cross multiply. And so I have x squared equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now I can take the square root to solve for x. And when I do that, I get that x is 4.12 times 10 to the negative third. And that is my H plus, as I saw there in the ice box. So now, to find the pH, I just have to take the negative log of that number, uh, just like we always do for pH. And so negative log of that number is going to be equal to 2.38. So that is the pH of this ascorbic acid solution. Now you might be wondering, why did we do all this and just ignore the Ka2? Because the Ka2 was given to us as well. Well, you, you know, we could use that to calculate the additional hydronium ion that was produced in that second acid dissociation. But in AP chemistry, we're not going to worry about that. And there are honestly two reasons that we're uh, not going to do that. The first one is if you look at the Ka values, the Ka2 is something like 10 to the seventh smaller than Ka1. So that means that since the Ka2 is so small, it's going to produce a minuscule amount of hydronium. In fact, it's so small, it's not worth our time calculating it. Now, just in case you uh, want to know, uh, I went ahead and calculated it because you, you actually can do this. It's not, it's not that hard. It's not really required for the AP curriculum here. But I, I did go ahead and do this. And I found that the H plus ion concentration from the Ka2 was 1.07 times 10 to the negative seventh moles per liter. So if you want to find out the total H plus in this reaction, then you want to add up the H plus from the Ka1, which we did calculate, that's this number right here, and add in the Ka2 value, that's the 1.07 times 10 to the minus seventh, and since it's such a small number, I'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, H plus from the auto dissociation of water, which is pretty darn close to that number, actually, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7th. And when I get that, I find a total of 4.12 times 10 to the minus 3rd. It really has not changed uh, my value any. So that's why we're not going to worry about the Ka2 calculations in AP chemistry. If you want to do that, your general chemistry textbook may go ahead and lead you through that, and you're welcome to learn that, but that's certainly not required. So this is the second video. If you learned something, please smash that thumbs up button, and if you go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. In the next video, we're, we're going to move on to week bases. So I hope to see you in that video. Thanks for watching.